protection values for a hunting cheetah may be different from those for a non-hunter, because while engaged in the chase, the cheetah is more likely to be twisting and turning and maybe running through vegetation. The speeds attained by the cheetah may only be slightly greater than those achieved by the Borong horn at 88.5 kilometers an hour, which is 50, 50, 55 miles per hour. And the Springbok, I don't know what either of these are, at 88 kilometers an hour, which is 55 miles per hour. But the cheetah additionally has an exceptional acceleration. One stride of a galloping cheetah measures four to seven meters. Imagine one of your stride being 13 to 23 feet. The stride length and the number of jumps increases with speed. During more than half of the duration of the sprint, the cheetah has all four limbs in the air, increasing the stride length. Running cheetahs can retain up to 90% of the heat generated during the chase. A 1973 study suggests the length of the sprint is limited by excessive buildup of body heat. When the body temperature reaches 40 to 41 degrees Celsius, 104 to 106 Fahrenheit. However, a 2013 study recorded the average temperature of cheetahs after hunts to be 38.6 degrees Celsius, 101.5 Fahrenheit, suggesting high temperatures need not cause hunts to be abandoned. Now, ecology and behavior. Cheetahs are active, mainly during the day. Whereas other carnivores, such as leopards and lions, are active mainly at night, these larger carnivores can kill cheetahs and steal their kills. Hence the diurnal tendency of cheetahs to helps them to avoid larger predators in areas where they are sympatric, such as the Ocavango Delta. In areas where the cheetah is the major predator, such as farmlands in Botswana and Namibia, actively tends to increase at night. This may also happen in highly arid regions, such as the Sahara, where daytime temperatures can reach 43 degrees Celsius, 109 Fahrenheit. The lunar cycle can also influence the cheetah's routine. Activity might increase on moonlit nights as prey can be sighted easily, though this comes with the danger of encountering larger predators. Hunting is the major activity throughout the day, with peaks during dawn and dusk. Groups rest in grassy clearings after dusk, Cheetahs often inspect their vicinity at observation points such as elevations to check for prey or larger carnivores. Even while resting, they take turns at keeping a lookout. It's cute to keep a lookout. I think the idea of the group all having someone dedicated to be a lookout is perhaps a little bit anthropomorphic the way that I think of it, but it's rather cute. Now, along a similar route of thinking, social organization. Cheetahs have a flexible and complex social structure and tend to be more gregarious than several other cats, except the lion. Individuals typically avoid one another, but are generally amicable. Males may fight over territories or access to females in ostrus, and on rare occasions such fight can result in severe 
injury and death. Females are not social and have minimal interaction with other individuals, barring the interaction with males when they enter their territories or during the mating season. Some females, generally mother and offspring or siblings, may rest beside one another during the day. Females tend to lead a solitary life or live with offspring in undefended home ranges. Young females often stay close to their mothers for life. But young males leave their mother's range to live elsewhere. Some males are territorial and group together for life, forming coalitions to collectively defend a territory which ensures maximum access to females. This is unlike the behavior of the male lion who mates with a particular pride of females. Interesting. In most cases, a coalition will consist of brothers born in the same litter who stay together after weaning, but biologically unrelated males are often allowed into the group. In the Serengeti, 30% members in the coalitions are unrelated males. Males in a coalition are affectionate towards each other, grooming mutually and calling out if any member is lost. Unrelated males may face some aversion in their initial days in the group. All males in the coalition typically have equal access to kills when the group hunts together and possibly also to females who may enter their territory. Random. I had no idea about any of this behavior. If a cub is the only male in a litter, he will typically join an existing group or form a small group of solitary males with two or three other lone males who may or may not be territorial. In the Kalahari Desert, around 40% of the males live in solitude. A coalition generally has a greater chance of encountering and acquiring females for mating. However, its large membership demands greater resources than do solitary males. A 1987 study showed that solitary and grouped males have a nearly equal chance of coming across females, but the males in coalitions are notably healthier and have better chances of survival than their solitary counterparts. So if you're going to be a cheater, go in a group. Now home ranges and territories. Unlike many other fields, among cheaters, females tend to occupy larger areas compared to males. Females typically disperse over large areas in pursuit of prey, but they are less nomadic and roam in a smaller area if prey availability in the area is high. As such, the size of their home range depends on the distribution of prey in a region. In central Namibia, where most prey species are sparsely distributed, home ranges average 554 to 7,000 kilometers squared, 214 to 2,722 square miles. Whereas in the woodlands of the Findegame Reserve in South Africa, which have plentiful prey, their home ranges range from a small amount like 34 to 157 kilometers square, which is 30 to 61 square miles in size. That's a really large variation. Cheetahs can travel long stretches over land in search of food. A study in the Kalahari Desert recorded an average displacement of nearly 11 kilometers, 6.1 miles, every day, and walking speeds range between 2.5 and 3.8 kilometers an hour, 1.6 and 2.4 miles per hour. Males are generally less nomadic than females. Often males and coalitions 
Yowling. 
someone coughing at you aggressively, quite angry, like, <laughs> it's quite funny to me. A bleat indicates distress, for instance, when a cheetah confronts a predator that has stolen its kill, growls, hisses, and moans, are accompanied by multiple strong hits on the ground with the front paw, during which the cheetah may retreat by a few meters. A meow through a versatile call is typically associated with discomfort or irritation. Then what are their other vocalizations? Individuals can make a gurgling noise as part of a close, amicable interaction. Amicable means you're friendly with each other. A niam niam sound may be produced while eating. Yum yum yum. Like that. Yum yum yum. Apart from chirping, mothers can use a repeated in in is to gather cups and brr brr is to guide them on a journey. A low pitch alarm call is used to warn the cubs to stand still. Bickering cubs can let out a whirr. A whirr. The pitch rises with the intensity of the quarrel and ends on a harsh note. Sounds like um, cheetahs have their own kind of annoying baby noises like humans. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it relaxing. I didn't really know anything about all the different noises that cheetahs make. Perhaps I should do a mouth sounds or audio video, audio video, or some sort of video where I focus on making cheetah sounds. That might be an interesting one, if you think so. And if you're still here, feel free to leave that down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching another video. Um, I love all of you, and I've been really happy that I've been able to make videos again recently. 